Hey there, photography business owners. It's Sarah from The Joy of Marketing. And today we're going to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, building a strong brand. You've probably felt the challenges to stand out from everyone else who has a camera and who is offering cheap sessions, especially when you're also trying to balance being a parent and taking care of your family. As someone who's been there, I understand how overwhelming it can be to start a business and create a brand that truly reflects who you are. In this video, I'll be sharing tips and insights on how to build a brand that sets you apart from the competition so that you can charge more than they do. So grab a hot cup of tea, sit back, and let's get started on building the photography business of your dreams. Building a successful photography business while still being present for your family is not only possible, but it's also what this channel is about. So if you're ready to make your dreams a reality, snap that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications. Let's talk about the importance of a strong brand. What even is a brand? Your identity, your logo, your face, your style, your images, that's how you look. Your brand is how people feel about you. Think about the way you shine in the eyes of your clients who think you are the absolute best thing in the world, or at least those who think that. What is their perception of you? They might say, oh my gosh, you're so creative, you're so fun, you're so funny, you always have the best ideas, your images are so amazing. Think about the feelings that come up for them when they think about you. To them, you are a brand, and that's your brand. As you clearly know, <laughs> the photography industry is incredibly crowded with low price competition, and it can be challenging to stand out when some of them are really good photographers. That's why having clear and consistent branding that resonates with your ideal clients is so critical. A disjointed, disconnected brand that, that communicates different things or screams, I am a cheap photographer, it is going to attract price sensitive clients. We call them freeple cheaple people. Like sharks in an ocean, when they smell blood, they like flock there. Same thing with cheap clients. They can sniff out a brand that's limping along, one who isn't clear on who they are and who doesn't toe the line on high quality. They can see it. So they will know you're limping along and they will push you to lower your prices and they will whine and they will try to convince you that everything you know is wrong. They are not the boss of you. Cause listen, when you do branding right, your brand will help you completely differentiate yourself from other photographers and it will attract clients who share your values and appreciate your full service approach to your photography business. You can't please everyone. And if you're telling yourself that you want to or need to or have to, you're going to really struggle. People always ask, well, why do I need a brand? Can we just talk about that for a second? The whole purpose of creating a strong brand is so that you can charge more. Think about it, back in the old days, you'd go into a grocery store and you'd order flour, like the little corner grocer, and they'd scoop in the bin and they'd put it in a brown bag and they'd give you flour. Then companies started creating brands that meant something. Now there are, are tons of different types of flour, some that, I don't know, have no gluten, <laughs> some that give to charity, some that mean something to people. That's the whole purpose of creating a strong brand that means something is, write this down if you have a pen, so that you can charge more than your competitors. Because when we try to compete on price, it is a price race to the bottom that you cannot win. Your brand is an investment in the long-term success of your business, and it helps establish trust and credibility with current clients and with potential clients. By building a strong brand and making that investment upfront, you will create a lasting impression that sets you up for success in the long term, in the competitive world of a price sensitive market of photography. So let's talk about the elements of having a strong brand and how it can help you attract your ideal clients and build a thriving business. 
And listen, I would love it in the comments below if you could share what challenges you have faced in your business building your brand. And if you've had some strategies that have rocked, share them. So first elements of a strong brand, let's start with your identity. Your identity is like your business's face. And when you see my face, that's how you recognize me. Same thing with your business. When people see your identity, your logo, your designs, your style, if you have a studio, what that looks like, but you don't need a studio. It's how people recognize you and they can trust you. That's how you know me, you trust me hopefully because I show up in a consistent way. I'm not one way one day, one way another day. I look differently, I change how I speak. One day I speak with an accent. You can't build a relationship with someone when you don't know who they are. And I see that's where so many photographers struggle because your identity isn't just your logo, it's everything visual about your company. From your logo, to your signage, to your website, to anything printed as far as promotional pieces. If you have a business card, which I am anti-business card, but that's for another day. Anything that you are putting out into the market represents your brand and that is part of your identity. Really, it's the foundation on which you build your brand. And it's the glue that holds your brand together because without a strong identity where you're all over the place, you can't build a strong brand because people can't attach to you. They don't have that no like and trust that they need to have to be able to have confidence that they know who you are and they want to work with you. Now, listen, you might be saying, oh, but Sarah, I don't have a lot of money to invest in professional design. This is a perfect time to build a relationship with a professional graphic designer and trade for photography so that you can get your identity right. Think about it. You're competing against big brands. And when you try to do it yourself, you are attracting do it yourselfers, the free pulled cheap old people. Also, I want you to listen. And I'm putting this in all capital letters. You can't please everyone. Seriously, you can't please everyone. And if you try to please everyone, you'll end up pleasing no one. When you try to be just vanilla, make everyone happy. You can't fill every niche and you can't offer everything to everyone. Instead, focusing on what we call your unique selling proposition or USP, like what it is that makes you different. And then looking at who is your ideal target audience? Who is that ideal customer? Is it a stay-at-home mom who has three kids under five and has decided to stay at home? Maybe she had a career, has an education, decided to stay home till her kids are in school. And she wants to decorate her home with images so she can remember these years that are flying by. Or is she the mom of twin teens who wants more than anything to build up their self-esteem as they go through the hard season of life, which come on, high school is that. <laughs> she wants them to have a beautiful, powerful portrait that shows them how different they are from their sibling and how special they are. That's what we do and that's how we find our ideal client. We have to identify them first. And look, when you're clear here, you'll create a brand that is tailored to your audience and that excites them and attracts them. Also, when it comes to your brand, let's talk about your reputation. As boutique business owners, our reputation is everything. It is, especially if you're in a smaller town like mine, you have to always have the highest integrity and pay attention to every detail of what you offer, your identity, your attitude, your relationship with the public, social media, and the outcome of every interaction and transaction. And that doesn't mean I don't mess things up and I don't have problems, but I do my best to do what I say I'm going to do, to over deliver. As soon as I know I'm gonna miss a deadline or mess something up, I reach out and I talk to my clients to do my very best to fix it because let's face it, we're not perfect. But I'm telling you, your personal reputation plays an enormous role in developing and strengthening your brand. So if you're the person that hops on Facebook in a whim when anything bad happens to you and you talk badly about the grocery store checker or whomever, people are judging you and it reflects on your brand. 
To build a strong brand, I want you to focus on your reputation. Manage it, tweak it, and pay attention to it because it's all you have. This goes from everything from how you conduct yourself at the PTO meeting in front of your children's friends' parents and what you do in the carpool line if you're honking at people and screaming at people or, or doing sign language, you know what I mean by that, and what you post on social media when you're having a bad day. Think before you act. Think before you post because when you're a small business owner, it all comes back to you. Also, when you're building a brand, think about how important consistency is for any brand, but it's even more critical for boutique businesses. When you're looking at a national or international company like Coca-Cola, they make sure that everything is Coca-Cola red and their logo is on everything from trucks to the clothing all the employees wear to the machines to the commercials to everything so if one person's off brand or goes to work dirty in their uniform sure it can reflect on the company but it's one little person in a giant organization when you're a boutique business owner you are a big if not the entire part of it so one off brand or one off identity moment could create confusion. It could completely damage the perception that customers have of your business, which is why I keep bringing up social media because gosh, it is so loud and it lives for so long. Try to think of the consistency in your boutique business is like that of a really good friend, maybe your best friend. If you were describing them, what would you say? They're trustworthy. They're reliable, they're steady. I can always count on them. They do what they say. When they mess up, like we work it out because we trust each other. So be your client's best friend when it comes to being their photographer. Think about what do you offer to your clients? What do they expect from you and how can you over deliver? All of those things, just simply being consistent is a primary factor in your brand. I love it when your customers know exactly what they can expect from you and your business. That's how you build a relationship. And then you can elevate that brand and that relationship with your gush worthiness. Are people talking about you and your business? What are you doing that's gush worthy? Is there something extraordinary that you're doing day in and day out? These simple things give customers a reason to talk about your business. So if you're not doing anything gush worthy, why should they gush on you? When I started, I worked with a framer. We did these amazing hand painted frames that appeared in Better Homes and Gardens Kids Rooms magazine. You don't think when my clients got that and hung that in their house that they were like, everybody come over and look at this. This is amazing. The custom books we do now for high school seniors, it is gush worthy. Our packaging, I've heard from other clients that I had a client who would go to our local pool. We have a yacht club that has a pool there and she would go there with the bag and walk around and show people all of the artwork that she bought from me because she was so proud of it and she thought the bag was so incredible. <laughs> so what are you doing so that people can gush on you? They feel like they are a part of your business. They care about you and they want to spread the word about you. It's truly loving them in what you're doing. It's not about gimmicks or promotional stunts. It's about creating products, services, and experiences that are gush worthy. Let's talk about strategies for building a strong brand. When you're looking at figuring out who your target audience is, especially if you're new, I know it's hard because you're saying, well, I just want to photograph everybody. But the reality is you're just going to make yourself like vanilla. And most people, when given a choice, they don't always choose vanilla. So you want to figure out who do I really want to work with and who is my ideal client? And sometimes you have to put a lot of things out there until you really start to get clear on that. But the sooner you do it, the sooner you can grow. And then understanding their pain points. What is it that they stay up late at night worrying about? Likely it's their children, their suffering, their mental health, how to decorate their home, what to hang on the walls. Once you figure those things out and you find what they value and what's important to them, it will help guide your branding decisions. And look, if you want to create a memorable brand, I really think it comes down to you and your style. 
Your brand really is a reflection of who you are. I love bright colors and whimsical things. And so that's how I decorate. Those are the colors I like to surround myself with. And if you look at my artwork, it's bright and fun and it has punches of color. Your personality may be completely different than mine. Your style may be completely different than mine. Don't try to force yourself into a box thinking, oh, I need to be like Sarah Petty or I need to be like this person who is amazing or this person who is amazing. Figure out who you are and what your style is and then be consistent. This is so hard for creatives because I think in general, we like a lot of things like that's cool. And this other style is cool. And this other style is cool. Unfortunately, you can't have all of them. You've got to pick a pony and ride it. Can't ride three ponies at once. Pick it and then get consistent on your visuals, which includes your logo, your color palette, your fonts, the look and feel and style of everything, and then stay consistent. I worked as a marketing director at an ad agency for years, and clients, by the time they got through the logo process and colors and, and making every decision, the market hadn't even seen it yet, and they were bored with it, so they wanted to change it, and we'd have to say no. Don't you think the designers over the years have wanted to change the Coca-Cola logo? But they know that's the power of the brand, and if you've studied marketing at all or you were alive in 1985, you might remember when Coca-Cola tried to change their formula. What they did is they did a blind taste test comparing Coke to Pepsi, and they added a bunch more sugar in the Coke, and people were picking this sugared up version of Coke and Pepsi. So they're like, we're finally going to beat Pepsi. They came out to the market with it as new Coke and people were furious. They were like, it's our Coca-Cola, right? It's baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, Chevrolet, and Coca-Cola. And so people were furious. They're like, we love our Coke the way it is. So within days, they changed back to Coca-Cola Classic. They learned the power of a brand. And so we can learn from that. We don't go changing our name and our colors and our look and our feel. Pick it and stick it and you will go so much further, so much faster. Also in your brand, you want to develop a voice that communicates your values. You don't have to sound like every other photographer. When I do website critiques for my students, it's like, Oh my gosh, didn't we just critique this one? And there it is again, and there it is again, and there it is again. Be unique. And don't forget to add personal touches to your brand. Your story is powerful. Insights from behind the scenes. People want to get to know you. You're not a corporation with you know all these executives. You are a person, and they want to get to know you. Because remember, your identity is what you look like. And your brand is how people feel about you. So let them know about you. And you don't have to be perfect. They can see some vulnerable moments about being a stressed out mom or whatever it is, but let them know you. The biggest thing is when you're developing your brand, look in the mirror. Who are you? What's important to you? Stop copying everyone else that's out there because then you're just a copycat. Be true to yourself when you're developing your brand and you're going to go so much further. And look, when you're authentic, that is the key to building trust with your audience and standing out in a crowded marketplace. When you're just copying other people, it just makes you feel like a commodity and that you're not worth more. So look, if there's something different about you, embrace it and celebrate it and highlight it as something that's interesting about working with you. For me, an example, I didn't exist as a child. I didn't. There were no photos of me printed as a little kid. I'm, I have one framed in when you walk in my studio in my camera room. It's this big and all you see is the top of my head. And I put it in a giant frame to illustrate the point of why my artwork leaves archivally framed because I believe every child deserves a wall portrait and they deserve to be celebrated on a wall, which makes me so happy. Now let's talk about putting your brand into action. I want you to lay out all of your things and conduct sort of an identity inventory. Review your website, your printed things, and look for consistencies or inconsistencies. And if there's no style or theme, that's another problem. What we love to do with our students, and we did this at the advertising agency with every client, is we created a living document, we call it graphic standards, where it shows th this is our color palette, these are the rules to follow, 
with regard to our logo and fonts and marketing materials. When I worked at Coca-Cola, I had a binder this thick for every brand, Coke, Diet Coke, Sprite, Diet Coke, Diet Cherry Coke with all the rules of the brand. That's why they've been so successful all of these years. And then small businesses who are competing with them don't know these things. Just pick fonts and change their logo different days and typeset it looking different ways and that is devaluing everything you do. Something else you can do is make a list of three things you want your customers to remember about your brand every time they think of you. Maybe pause this and write those three things down. I also want you to identify the things that are currently thrilling your clients, the things that set you apart. What are they gushing on you for? And make a plan to do more of it. And if they're not gushing on you, ding, 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 they should be. So we gotta be better. Now, if you're somewhere stuck in the middle and you're using multiple names and your email doesn't match your domain, that doesn't match your business name, you can evaluate whether rebranding is the right decision for your business. Look at why, not just because you're bored of it, but maybe you have some problems, some disconnects. Look at how it will affect your brand equity and what the investment is required to rebrand. Because it's a big deal. If you rebrand, you've got to get rid of everything with the old brand. You do, or it's going to create confusion and conflict, and it's going to erode the trust and the love that you've built in your brand. So if you decide to rebrand, set a realistic budget, set a time frame for the process, and get it done. Embrace the new brand standards to consistently fulfill expectations you've set for your clients. And I want you to aim to go above and beyond in every area of your business. So you're creating gushworthy experiences that will make your clients want to talk about you to others. And then be vigilant about monitoring your brand and maintaining the brand standards to ensure consistency in your identity and reputation. So don't just go out and sign up for Pinterest or Instagram and use your nickname and throw a snapshot on there where you've cut people out of the image. Everything must be consistent. Building a strong brand takes time and a commitment to your products and your identity. But I want you to know this is how you're able to charge more. This is how you're able to get better clients and get rid of all the cheap competitors. And I know in the end you will be saying, oh my gosh, that was so hard, but it was so worth it. Building a strong photography brand requires consistency, attention to detail, and being mindful of your client's experience. So listen, take action on the tips and strategies that I discussed in this video, and you will be on your way to building your strong brand that sets you apart in the photography industry and allows you to charge more, and you'll find that you have better clients. So go ahead, take the first step towards creating a memorable brand that resonates with your ideal clients.